Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and today I have the pleasure to sit down with a, yet another PI from another Martin Delaney Collaboratory to talk about HIV care research. So today I am with Dr. Steve Deeks. If you would please introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I am uh, from the University of California, San Francisco. I've been doing HIV care and research since 1993. Wow. Um, and I co-direct the DARE Collaboratory. Awesome. So you've really seen the progression in research and understanding HIV and treatment. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I started in 1993 when things were pretty bad, particularly yeah. in San Francisco. Um, and so I've seen, and that's kind of when some of the newer drugs began to come on the scene, particularly 3TC and then the Proteus inhibitors. Um, so I've seen things gradually and consistently improve you know, over the 30 plus years. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, strategy that you employ to target HIV cure? So their Laboratory is one of the legacy uh, groups. We've been around now, this is our third cycle. Okay. Um, and, and more or less since day one, we've been very focused on um, identifying the interaction between the virus and the immune system, particularly in tissues, and then leveraging that information to come up with immunotherapeutic strategies, vaccines and adjuvants and antibodies, um, to you know, reduce the reservoir, mm -hmm. um, uh, but mainly to control it. And the study, the cohorts, that the, the collaboratory has been designed as largely focused on about half the resources going to work in the monkey model, and then the rest of the work, the rest of the resources in, the, in, in people, with a lot of crosstalk between the two. Oh, awesome. Okay. So early research oftentimes starts in, like, cell line? Right. And then the next progression would be animals and then humans. Correct. So you're working with animals and humans. So that's kind of further along than some of the other research that we've talked about the previous days. Sure. I mean, no, we do have some basic discovery in the laboratory. Um, so we do have the entire spectrum. But I think our real strength has always been the interaction between the work in the, in the non-human primate model and the stuff we're doing in people, particularly in the clinical trials. Mm -hmm. um, our extended team has a lot of experience in taking ideas um, from the lab from the uh, animal models directly into the clinic. And we do a lot of first in human early clinical trials. And through those clinical trials, we um, get the kind of tissue and blood specimens that we can feed back to the lab. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of a circle. And are those trials really focused on suppressing the latent reservoir? Uh, for the most part, our studies uh, in San Francisco, but elsewhere in the, in the collaboratory, particularly Sharon Loon's group, um, in Melbourne has focused on um, developing ways to control the virus post-treatment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, therapeutic vaccines is a big focus. Um, we're looking at adjuvants like TLR agonists and so forth and interleukin-15 and drugs like that that can make vaccines better. Okay. Um, so and, a vaccine would be for someone who doesn't have HIV. Oh no no no. So so the vaccine. Oh, no. So yeah no great question. So a vaccine um it, it generally it's all the vaccines we've studied actually were like you said developed to prevent the infection. Mm -hmm. um, but you know vaccines um, improve your immune response, particularly T cells and antibodies, and we think those same kind of T cells and antibodies are needed for control. Ah okay. So cool. there's prevention vaccines and therapeutic vaccines. I see. But good Learned question. Something new. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, and this is a little bit of a personal question, but can you tell us what inspired you initially to get involved in HIV research and then HIV cure? Uh, my, my <laughs> you know, when I was um, a resident in San Francisco, right, you couldn't avoid HIV, half the hospital, um, you know, at San Francisco General Hospital, yeah. about half was people with HIV, um, and that was hard work. But I actually also was interacting with them um, you know, primarily young men with HIV were healthy in my outpatient clinic. And that I found truly inspiring. Um, and many of them were activists. Mm -hmm. um, and I got connected through Act Up Golden Gate, which was a really effective, um, um, pretty aggressive activist group in San Francisco uh, in the 1990s. Um, and I wasn't really particularly looking, heading in that direction, but I got inspired and met, a, met some incredible people and um, started attending the meetings and and the yeah, there was an inter there was actually really a wonderful, wonderful, um, still is mutual interaction between, you know, the HIV activist advocacy community and the academic community and the funders, 
which, to be honest, was invented by what was happening during that period of time. You know, particularly Tony Fauci and his relationship with... Um, so we were doing this on a more granular level in San Francisco, and it was really, truly inspiring. And now it's, you know, now it's expected, right, in all areas of medicine. But it is one of the most important parts of the HIV epidemic in terms of how it's actually contributed positive things, is that interaction. So, yeah, that's how I got started, and I became more of an activist than I ever thought I would be, and um, have had collaborations uh, with the community ever since. So that's how I got started in HIV. And then in HIV Cure, um, you know, jumpstart to, where I think, around 2010, 2011, I went to clinic. And um, What does that mean? I, was, uh, yeah, I went to my clinic, because I'm a clinical. Okay. So I had to go to my clinic, and I was going to see my patients. And I was told that there's a... Someone named Timothy Ray Brown sitting in the waiting room waiting to see you. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, so Timothy had moved to San Francisco and wanted me to become his doctor. Um, and it's hard. Um, it's hard to, to unless, unless you meet him directly, to understand what an inspiring individual he could be. Because of his, I mean, he's just had such a presence, right? And um, very, very modest and um, uh, just lovely. And so I became his doctor, um, you know, well wow. after the transplant. And, uh, but then he began to contribute. So he joined our studies and was very heroic and doing all sorts of tissue biopsies. And so that, that got us into the, into the cure world. Mm. Timothy. Amazing. I didn't know that about you. That's fascinating and inspiring. Um, and so how are you engaging? I mean, you've pretty much already answered this, but with community and specifically also with the CAP. We have a pretty active cab, a mature cab. It's been primarily um, um, working with us in terms of managing our relationship uh, with our clinical trials, where we typically, um, you know, run our clinical trials as early as we can through the cab. The clinical trials are not funded by DARE, but they generate a lot of the science and the specimens that contribute to DARE. And then we try to have the cabs interact as much as we can and our community engagement group uh, with our scientists who are, you know, for the most part, a bit detached from the community. And so that's been quite healthy. Yeah. And so you're able to get feedback, too, on the clinical trials? That's where we primarily, that's where I think we're, we desperately need the kind of um, insights that our CAB is um, able and willing to provide. And so that's typically, that's where the most robust discussions have occurred um, over the years, going back to since, since day one. Okay. And so in the next year, what do you hope to find out, discover, answer from your research? Uh, within DARE, um, over the past year, um, in, um, in our work in the non-human primate model, in the monkeys, and our work in the clinical trials that are adjacent to DARE, we've seen uh, strong evidence now that with therapeutic vaccines and antibodies, we can, really for the first time, reduce the set point, control the virus, partially. No home run, but we're definitely making progress. And so the real focus is figuring out um, why, what is, ex what, is, what is the immune response that we're turning on, and why does it eventually fail, right? So, yeah. so it's on both ends, right? Because we have an early success, um, and we can control the virus, it, pretty good levels but it doesn't last forever so we got to figure out well how do we get lucky in the first place and what's happening later on and so that requires iterative science between again the work in the monkeys and working people that's the focus yeah it's that's so like it just feels like it's so on the cusp because something is happening you're getting something but it's not lasting and it's almost um i was speaking with someone yesterday about post-treatment controllers and i'm right. like is there research in what exactly art is doing to initiate this res natural response in post-treatment controllers. And he, he said, you know, we don't really understand it yet. So yeah. it's, we're right there. We're right there. I mean, I, you know, the, so there's post-treatment controllers, which we're studying in detail. Um, and there's post-interventional controllers, which is the next step, right? Okay. So post-treatment is basically people just going on standard antiretroviral drugs, stopping drugs, and not rebounding. Um, now we have globally... Um, a growing number of people who've gotten an intervention, mainly antibodies and vaccines, mm -hmm. and are now controlling. And so we're looking really deeply into the post-interventional controllers as well as the post-treatment controllers 
because we have success. We have to understand it so that we can make it better. Okay, thanks for clarifying that for us. That's a new term for me, post-intervention controller. Yep. Um, I know you have somewhere to be, so we're going to keep it short today. Thank you so much for taking the time with me and inspiring the folks on the other side of the lens. I would love to do like a longer podcast style interview with you so we can kind of... Oh, I love podcasts, yes. Okay, great. All <laughs> thank right, you. thank you, Steve. All right, bye. Cheers.